Hello lovelies, in this video the brilliant Miss B is going to look at place value rounding for your GCSE maths. There are lots of examples here for you to practice to make sure that you are exam ready. If you want to practice this exam style situation then over my website there are loads of papers just waiting for you to download them. video we're going to take a look at rounding. Now there are three types of rounding. There's rounding to a specific place value, rounding to decimal places and rounding to significant figures. So in this video we're going to look at the first type of rounding which is to a place value. To show you how this works I'm going to write down the number in the first question which is 5127 and what we are being asked to do is to find the value of the 7. Now to help us figure out what the value of the 7 is, I'm going to write down the place values. I'm going to start with the smallest number, which is always going to be on the right hand side, and that is our units column. We have 7 units. Then we have the tens column, 2 tens, the hundreds column, 100, and the thousands column, 5 thousand. So what is the value of the 7? We have 7 units, so I'm going to write down 7. Little tip is when you actually read the number out, 5127, you actually say 7 when you get up to that number that you're looking for, the 7. Let's do the same thing for question 2. So we have 4,400 and 26. I'm going to write down the place values. We have units, tens, hundreds, and thousands. We're being asked to find the value of the 2, and the 2 is in the tens column. So I'm going to write down that we have 2 tens. Now again, a little tip, when you read the number out, you can also write down what you say out loud when you read out the number. So we'd have 4,426. So you say 20 when you get to the 2. Now 20 is exactly the same as two tens, so we can say 20 as well. Moving on to question three, we have a number that looks longer, so let's write this down. We have 752.46. So again, we're going to write down the place values for this. Let's start off with the units. Now, the units here are going to be the first number before the decimal place. Then we've got our tens and a hundred. Again, you can say it out loud if you're not sure where the numbers go. You start off saying 700, so the seven will be in the hundreds column. Now, after the decimal places, we have the tenths column, so numbers which are 10 times smaller than one, and we have the hundredths column, numbers which are 100 times smaller than one. Now, we've been asked to find the value of the six. The six is in the hundredths column, so we're going to write down six hundredths. So for hundredths, write hundred. And once you've written down hundred, just put a T H S on the end. If you say hundred, that's a hundred times bigger than your units. And if you say hundredths, that's a hundred times smaller than units. Now let's take a look at question four. We have 22. Point six seven five. So again, you can always start off writing down the place value names. So we'll have our units and tens. And then on the other side of the decimal place, we're going to have tenths, we're going to have hundredths, and we're going to have thousandths. We've been asked to find the value of the seven. The seven is in the hundredths column. So our answer is seven hundredths. Now let's look at question five. We have 5,381.45. So let's write down the place values. We have a uh, units, tens, hundreds, and thousands on one side of the decimal place. And then we have our hundredths and our tenths on the other side of the decimal place. 
we are looking for the value of the three. The three is in the hundreds column. Three hundreds, or we can just write 300, be the same thing. If you get one of these questions on your GCC exam paper, it'll usually be question number one, or at least on the first page. And a surprising number of students do rush these and get it wrong. It's worth one mark, it should take about one minute. So as you can see, the working out didn't take very long here at all. So it can be worth and it's a little bit of time to make sure you don't lose a mark for a silly reason. So now we've spoken about what place value means, now we're ready to round to specific place values. So firstly, with the median questions, we'll look at rounding to the nearest integer. Now I'm going to show you a method that will work for all kinds of rounding. So what we need to do is write down the number first. So we have 8.4. And then once we've written down 8.4, we are going to identify what we are rounding to. And when we're talking about rounding to the nearest integer, that means we are rounding to the nearest whole number. So we're going to be rounding to the units column. Once you've identified what you're rounding to, rule off after it, and you are going to keep everything on the left, and we are going to lose everything on the right. So we're going to keep the 8, and 8 is the answer, and we are going to lose the 4. So 8.4 would become 8. Let's look at question two. We have 4.8. So we need to identify what we're rounding to. We're rounding to the nearest integer. So we're going to round off after the units. An integer meaning whole number. We're rounding off to the units. So let's rule off after the units. We are going to keep everything on the left and lose everything on the right. So it looks like our answer is going to be 4. Now before we move on there's one extra detail here and that is rounding up. Now sometimes you have to round up and sometimes you round down and it's all about that first number that you're losing. So the first number we're losing is an 8. If that number is a 5 or higher you're actually going to round up. So the answer is going to be 5. So the process is, we are keeping everything on the left, we're keeping the 4. We're losing everything on the right, but the first number we're losing is greater than a 5. So we are going to round up. Now, before we move on, let's just talk in more detail about rounding up and rounding down. So going back to question 1, we said the answer was 8. Let's have a look on a number line where 8.4 actually is. And 8.4 is going to be just before halfway so roughly around about there and that is closest to the 8 so that's why our answer is 8 it's the integer the whole number which is closest to 8.4 now when we look at 4.8 i was talking about rounding up with that so let's look where 4.8 is so 4.8 if you imagine that 4.5 is halfway in between 4 and 5, then 4.8 is going to be even further along towards the 5. So you can see that 4.8 is closer to 5 than it is to 4. So when we range the nearest integer, the nearest whole number to 4.8 is actually 5. And it's all about, look at the number. If it's a 5 or larger, we're going to round up because it'd be closer to the larger number and if it's less than 0.5 then we're going to be rounding down because it'll be closer to the smaller number. So with that in mind let's take a look at question 4 and we have 84.1. So again let's identify the names of the place values. We have our units column and our tens column. We're rounding to the nearest integer. So we'll rule off after the units like that and we're going to keep everything on the left and we are going to lose everything on the right so this time we're keeping two numbers now before i write 84 down we're just going to check uh, the first number we're losing to see if it's a five or higher because if it is a five or higher it'll be closest to 85 but it's a one so we're rounding down so 84.1 will round down to 80 four now question four we have 798.7 so 
So let's write down the names of place values. We have our units, tens, and hundreds. We're still rounding as near as integer, so we'll rule off after the units column. We are going to keep the numbers on the left lose the numbers on the right. So at the moment, it looks like the answer will be 798. But before we move on, let's check the first number we're losing. Now that's a seven, which means we're gonna to have to round up and we're actually closer to 799. Now for the final median question, we have 222.5. So let's write down what place values we have. We have the units, tens and hundreds, rule off after the units. And we're gonna keep everything on the left and lose everything on the right. So it looks like the answer will be 222. Before we write it down, Let's check if we're rounding up or not. The first number we're losing is a five. So we're gonna round up on a five or higher. So we're actually gonna write down 223 as our final answer. Now, before we move on, you might think this method is a bit much and you can just do these questions in your heads and that's fine. But this method is gonna work for all our rounding. And it's particularly going to be helpful for the significant figure questions. So it's worth just using this method and practicing it on easy questions like this. So you're ready to use it for the more difficult questions that are coming up in later videos. So moving on to the hard questions, we'll continue with the same method. So we'll start off by rounding 81 and this time it's the nearest 10. Let's write down the place value. We have a units column and a tens column. And this time to rule off after the tenths. I'm going to keep the numbers on the left and we are going to lose the numbers on the right. Now be very careful when you write your answer down because you might just want to write down eight. However, that is not an eight. It is eight tenths. And if you write down eight, we're just saying it's eight units, not eight tenths. So we do need to put a zero on the end to show that it's worth 80. So when I say that we are losing numbers, it's not that we're just writing nothing there at all. For units, tens, hundreds, thousands and upwards, if you are gonna lose one of those place values, you must fill in a zero so that the other numbers retain the place value. However, with decimal, that's not an issue. Now question two is 806. So we're gonna write down the place values we have. We have units, tens and hundreds. It's worth labeling those. We're only to the nearest 10. So we'll rule off after the tens column and we're gonna keep the numbers on the left and lose the numbers on the right. So we're keeping the eight and the zero. Then before we move on, just check the first number you're losing. Is it a five or higher? And it's a six. So we're not gonna write down 80. We're going to round it up and write 81 because we're rounding it up. And the final thing is just check your uh, place values are correct. Now that 8 should be in the hundreds column. If I write down 81, I'm writing 8 in the tens column. So the 8 must still be in the hundreds column. We've got to fill in a 0. And we're losing units. We've got to write a 0 there instead. So the answer is 810. Question 3, we have 716. So let's write down our labels, units, tens, hundreds. And this time we're rounding to the nearest hundred. So I'm going to rule off after the hundreds column, keeping the numbers on the left and losing the numbers on the right. So we're going to be keeping the seven. Ask yourself, am I rounding up? Well, the first number we're losing is a one. So we are not going to be rounding up. So we're just going to write down the seven. And then if we're losing tens and units, we have to write in zeros for the tens and units columns, just so the seven is still in the hundreds column. So we're saying that 700 is the nearest hundred to 716. A common mistake will be looking at the six in the units column and thinking that's five or higher, so we're rounding up. You only look at the first number, the largest number to see if you're rounding up and the 110 is larger than the six units. So you only look at that first number to round. 
you can ignore the rest. Next we have 7,282. So let's label this units, tens, hundreds, thousands. We're rounding to the nearest thousands, so I'm ruling off after the thousands. So we're keeping the seven and we are losing the two, the eight and the two. Let's check if we're rounding up. So the first number is the 200, so that's lower than a five, so we are not rounding up. So we are gonna write down seven. Now that is seven thousands, so if we're losing the hundreds, tens and units, we've got to fill up with zeros, so it retains its place value in the thousands column. So the answer is seven thousand. Now for the final herd question, we have 653. Let's label the place value. We have units, tens, and hundreds. Now we're rounding to the nearest thousands and we don't have any thousands. So what I'm gonna do is I am gonna label the thousands column that does have a value of zero. And if we're rounding to the nearest thousands, I am gonna rule off after the thousands. Now we're going to keep everything on the left and there's nothing there, so that's a bit odd for now. And we'll lose every single number that we have. Okay, it seems a little bit strange. But then you think to yourself, well, am I going to round up? And the first number we're losing, the six, is a five or higher. So we are going to round up. So we're not going to write down zero thousands. We're going to round up to one thousand. And then we're losing our hundreds, tens, and units. So fill up on zeros. So our answer is 1,000. Uh, you could even, if it helps, put a zero in the thousands column just to help you. And again, you know, we say, well, we're going to keep the thousands. We're going to keep the zero thousands, but we're going to round up because of the six to 1,000. Finally, let's check if it makes sense. Is 1,000 the nearest thousand to 653? Uh, I think it is, so that would be our answer. Ouch! This is why in some videos I have explained scratches.